Welcome back to Combat Mission, where we're going to look at getting around the battlefield on foot. The different movement commands, what they're best for, and a little bit on how to avoid getting your infantry all killed. This time I'm using Combat Mission Black Sea for the footage, but as usual we're dealing with basic game engine stuff here, so it'll work the same across all of the Combat Mission titles. Actually, ordering your troops around is dead simple. Select the unit you want to move, click on one of the movement commands, then click on where you want them to go. This creates a waypoint, which is linked back to the unit by a coloured line. The colour corresponds to the colour of whichever movement command you used, so that when you've got the unit selected, you can see where they're going to be going and how. By default, you can only see the waypoints for units you have selected, but if you press Alt and P, you can toggle on the move paths for all of your units. Personally, I prefer to see it all because that way it's easier to coordinate everything and I can just select one unit and see what my whole force is doing. You can stack waypoints by repeating the process as many times as you like. Intermediate waypoints have a triangular icon and the final waypoint always has a sphere, so you can tell where the end is. Chances are that you'll have to tweak or totally change your orders as the game develops though, so setting out an intricate, highly detailed path across the map on turn 1 is probably going to be a waste of time and effort. If you do need to change or tweak waypoints, all you have to do is click the waypoint or the relevant line section and drag it somewhere else. You can also change which type of movement each order involves by selecting it and then clicking on whatever movement command you want to change it to. If you need to delete waypoints, you have two options. You can delete the current final waypoint by pressing backspace once. Holding the button down will delete them all in quick succession. Alternatively, you can press the tiny little cancel all orders button, which does exactly what it says on the tin. Beyond these basics, there are three important things to bear in mind. The first is that if you double click a unit, you'll select it and all the other units in its formation or subformation. So if we double click an infantry squad, we'll select the whole platoon. If we double click company HQ, we'll select the whole company. And if we start giving orders, we'll be giving orders to all of the selected units at the same time. This can be a bit of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it can be quite useful in the early stages of a battle or in safe areas where being precise isn't that important, then you can avoid having to fine-tune loads of orders. On the other hand, accidents do happen, and one of the worst feelings in combat mission is the one you get when you realise you mistakenly ordered a whole platoon forward instead of an expendable two-man scout team. This is another reason I like to play with all the move paths showing. It's a little easier to spot these screw-ups before they happen. The second thing to bear in mind is that the game gives you a rough preview of exactly which action square your pixel tripper are going to end up in, or which action squares if your squad has multiple teams. It's worth paying attention to this to make sure that your troops are going to end up in the kind of position you want when they reach their destination. Using this you can see if your unit is going to line up along a wall, or cram itself into a single forest tile, or end up with one team out in the open, things like that. Finally, it's important to be aware that the Pixel Trippen will do their best to carry out your orders, but their TAC AI does have a say in certain situations. In terms of milder effects, units can stick to your orders but change the speed, slowing down if they're fatigued, or speeding up if they come under fire. At the other end of the scale, units can throw your orders out of the window, stopping to take cover or running away. The worst case scenario is that they become shaken or go into a panic, in which case they're more concerned with self-preservation than doing as they're told, and can't be ordered around at all. This is another feature that both giveth and taketh away. Sometimes your troops will react appropriately, and sometimes they will do something that gets them all killed. Either way, it's best to try and plot orders that limit the potential for the TAC AI to take over. This is mostly an exercise in tactical common sense, like not exposing your pixel trap unnecessarily, but the TAC AI is also responsible for pathfinding, and the longer the movement commands you give your units, the more they have to path for themselves and the more opportunities they have to do it wrong. I'll get back to this towards the end, but lots of shorter orders generally produce better results than a few long orders. Now that we've got that out of the way, there are eight different movement commands you can give your Pixel Truppen. Five of these are basic movements that every unit can carry out, the other three are more specialised and 
only available under certain conditions. We're just going to deal with the basic commands here, which are fast, quick, move, slow, and hunt. These all balance speed, spotting ability, and fatigue in different ways, as well as biasing the unit's tech AI in favor of certain behavior if it comes under fire. With fast, the pixel truppen are running or sprinting. This is obviously the fastest command, but it comes at a cost. The troops will tire out very quickly, and their spotting ability is poor, especially outside their frontal arc, because they're concentrating on where they're going. It's about getting from point A to point B as fast as possible. So the pixel truppen are less likely to react to their situation and will prioritize getting to their waypoint. Fast is best used sparingly with the infantry. I only use it when I need the pixel truppen to get out of trouble quickly or cross a danger area like a street. Any kind of circumstance where a short burst of speed is going to keep casualties down or bring some kind of tactical benefit. You definitely do not want to be sprinting your troops all around the map because they're going to become exhausted and useless in very short order. And it's probably a bad idea to move fast into a new area because if the enemy is there, the pixel trip and probably aren't going to spot them. Quick is a step down from fast. It's more of a jog or a light run. So we're sacrificing a bit of speed but the pixel trippen can keep this pace up for much, much longer, and going at a slower pace, they have a little more time to scan for the enemy than they do when they're sprinting. They're also more likely to do things like engage the enemy, stop and take cover, than they would be if they were moving fast. This is the movement command I probably use the most, because it's the best balance of speed and fatigue, and the less effective spotting isn't always an important factor. If the troops are out of contact, then the spotting isn't relevant, and if they are in contact or in imminent contact and spotting is important, then you should probably have some stationary units providing fire support who can do a better job of it anyway. Move is a walking pace, so you don't get anywhere particularly fast, but the pixel truppen can walk all day long without getting tired and they have loads of time to spot targets. It's almost a kind of patrolling speed, and they are the most reactive to the enemy here, being more prepared to stop, engage, return fire, and take cover than the faster commands. I don't use move as often as I use quick, mostly because I don't think its advantages in zero fatigue and increased awareness are worth sacrificing speed for. The improved spotting ability of troops with a move command is only improved relative to troops who are using quick or fast. It's still worse than units who are stationary, so if you're worried about making contact with the enemy, like I said with the quick command, you're better off having some fire support on overwatch than relying on your moving troops to deal with potential problems. Being able to get around without tiring your units out is useful, but tactically speaking, stamina is nowhere near as important as position. It's much, much better to be out of breath and knackered in a good defensive position than it is to be attacking that position at full stamina. So speed has a kind of tactical significance that stamina really doesn't. This doesn't mean that the move command is useless. If you don't have any time pressure and your infantry are in an area of relative safety, then you're not going to lose anything by using move but it can also be good in dense terrain where moving fast or quick might expose your troops a little bit too much. Giving your infantry a slow command will make them get down and crawl. This rather obviously means that they move very slowly and they tire out very quickly, but they are considerably more difficult to spot than standing targets and are much more likely to stop, engage the enemy and then continue than units using the other commands. Crawling has the obvious utility for making the most of low cover like hedges, low walls and ditches, but it's also very useful for sneaking the last few meters into a position where you want to set up an OP or a heavy weapon, not only during the actual movement, but because units that finish a slow command will usually stay in the prone position for a little while and not immediately give their position away. On the flip side, it really is only any good in short bursts because the pixel trippen will exhaust themselves so quickly. So it's one of those commands that is very useful, but only in some very specific circumstances. The next command is similarly very context sensitive. This is the hunt command. Hunt is probably best described as a kind of move to contact order. The pixel trippen will move forward slowly, 
with their weapons ready, scanning for the enemy. If they make a spot or if someone opens fire on them, they will stop and cancel all of their orders. It is tiring, so it's best to use sparingly, and while this might sound like a really handy command, it's important to consider the kind of terrain you're working in and how good of an idea it is for your pixel truck to stop in it. So for example, if we wanted to cross a street to clear a building, the street is completely open and devoid of cover, so if we send a team across using hunt and they detect the enemy, they'll stop in the middle of the street. That's bad, because they'll be left dangerously exposed. By comparison, if we're hunting forward in a forest and we spot the enemy, the pixel truppant will be stopping in concealment, which is much better. Overall, like I said, hunt is very useful, but only in the right situations, and outside of those situations, it can actually be a bit of a liability. Those then are the five basic movement commands you can use to get your infantry around the battlefield in combat mission. They are just tools in a toolbox though. What movement command to use is only half the question. Much more important is where you're sending your pixel truppen and why. That's a little bit out of the scope of this video because it's already far longer than I intended it to be, but here are a few quick tips. Firstly, don't move where the enemy can see you unless you have no choice. If the enemy can spot you, he can shoot you, and you're giving him information about what forces you have and what you're doing. So as much as possible, you want to be moving out of line of sight of the enemy, whether that's behind slopes, behind buildings, through woods, or under cover of smoke. Secondly, minimize the amount of time your troops spend in the open. Open ground is a significant obstacle and it's not somewhere you want to be hanging around if you can help it. So try and choose routes with the minimum amount of open space and then cross those open spaces as fast as you can. Finally, short orders are better than long orders. First of all, the TAC AI is not the best pathfinder in the world and letting it try and find a way through complicated terrain is presenting it with a lot of chances to screw things up, so shorter orders give you more control. Pixel Truppen also have a tendency to string themselves out into long lines when they have a long way to go, and as you might expect, this is liable to end very badly if the enemy can fire down the line and hit multiple targets at once. Every time the Pixel Truppen hit a waypoint though, they will stop, spread out a little and take a knee or go prone while they wait for the rest of the squad to catch up. This means that not only are the pixel truppens spreading out more, but every time they stop, they're having a bit of a rest and they can scan the surrounding terrain for the enemy. So it's a good idea to break long distances into smaller chunks, both tactically speaking and in terms of gameplay, and if you're not in a rush, adding a little pause command for a couple of seconds on every waypoint will give the pixel truppen a chance to take advantage of their little rest. That's it for this episode of Combat Mission Basics a little bit of the core mechanics this time. Hope you guys found it useful, especially if you're new to the game, and I'll catch you in the next video.